I am Corey Kerr, and this is AI to AE, where we take what you know about Adobe Illustrator and teach you how to make things move in Adobe After Effects. And so today what we're going to do is we are going to have this little butterfly fly across the screen. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take two-dimensional layers that you've created in Adobe Illustrator, and you're going to make those move in 3D space. It's called 2.5D. Mostly what people do in 2.5D is they separate things in Z space. So it gets closer to or further away from the camera. But what we're going to do today is we are going to make it so that you can see that things are rotating in 3D space. Instead of just separating things in 3D space, we are going to rotate them in 3D space. And so let's get started. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to File, Import, File. And if you want to know how to import um, things correctly, then make sure that you watch my AI to AE um, playlist that I have on my YouTube channel. And you can kind of follow along there. But basically, we're going to go Composition Retain Layer Sizes and click Import. That will import this. And then I'm going to double click in this composition. I'm going to hide my, my legs. I don't need those legs anymore. Okay. So now here's my basic file. What you'll see here is if I solo these, that I've got a head, I've got a nose, I've got some wings here. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the head and I'm going to start moving the anchor point. The anchor point is where everything is going to pivot from. The anchor point is kind of the origin of all of the movement, whether it be scale, position, rotation, or whatever. Okay, and so we're gonna take that, and then I'm gonna take the mouth, and I will move the anchor point to pivot with the mouth. We're using our anchor point tool up here. Shortcut for that is Y. You can kind of just move things around like that. Okay, now I'm going to parent. That means that I'm going to um, attach things to other things. If you want to watch the parenting, you can go watch the skeleton video in my AE, AI to AE playlist. Okay, so that'll teach you that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little pick whip. I'm going to pick whip that head. And now wherever the head goes, let me show you. Wherever the head goes, the mouth now goes with it. Right? Okay. So that's cool there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is real quick before I get too far, I'm going to select everything. And because this is vector, I'm going to turn on constantly rasterize layer, continuously rasterize layer. With continuously rasterize layer, um, it'll make sure that everything stays crisp no matter what angle we see it at or how big it is, okay? So that's kind of important. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn everything into a 3D object. And so I'm gonna click underneath the cube here. And if you don't see these, you can always hit toggle switches and modes and it'll kind of show you different things, right? So I'm going to go in here with everything selected and I'm going to turn on the cube. Now you'll notice, oh, it gets really noisy and it looks really weird. Okay. And we have all these different controls. We'll get to those in a minute. Okay. So right now, just ignore all those things. There's still anchor points. It's just now, if you look at like the position, for example, we used to have X and Y. Now we have Z. This is now a 3D layer. If you look at rotation, we can now rotate not only on X. I'm going to unclick this and check this off. See how there's just one point of rotation? But when I turn this on, we now have rotation on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Okay, and so we can kind of do that. All right, the last thing that I want to show you um, is I want to show you the shy guy. Okay, and so if I don't need to, to do anything with a layer, but I don't want to delete it, I can just click on this little shy guy down here, and then when I toggle this off and on, it'll hide all of my shy layers, okay? So um, once I have the mouth parented, I don't need that anymore. And so I'm just gonna hit shy guy there so my mouth layer goes away. I'm gonna take the head and I'm gonna parent it to the body and I don't need the head anymore. I'm gonna parent this wing and if you wanna check what's what, you can kind of just hit the solo button over here. So I'm gonna take this wing and I'm gonna parent that to the front wing and then I don't need this one anymore. I'm gonna take this front wing, I'm gonna do two things with it. I'm gonna parent it to the body, and then I'm gonna change the color of it to yellow. So you can kind of see that. Now if I unshy these things, okay, you'll see that this wing is parented to this wing, and that wing is parented to the body. So wherever the body goes, those two wings go, because this wing will follow this wing, and this wing will follow the body. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on those other wings. Okay, so I'm gonna shy these guys again. Okay, and I'm gonna go back wing, and I just wanna make sure I'm on the right wing there. Okay, so that's the one I want. And then that's the one I wanna to parent to it. So I'm gonna grab this wing, 
pick whip it to that wing. Then I can shy that guy, don't need him anymore. I'm gonna grab this wing and I'm gonna change the layer color to something else, red, sure. Okay, and then I'm gonna parent that guy to the body, okay? Body top, I will also parent to the body and I'm gonna shy him out as well. So I've just got these three things. I'm gonna bring my head back. Well, I'll do this in a minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this wing here and I'm going to use Y to choose my anchor point tool. I'm gonna to grab my anchor point tool and I'm gonna drag it down so that he pivots right there. But I wanna make sure that I'm doing the right thing here. And so I'm gonna choose two views, okay? And so your, your view menu, come on now, fit, there we go. Your view menu right here, you can choose a number of different views. You can go view, one view, which will give you your active camera, two views, horizontal or vertical, or four views, which gives you all kinds of different things. Right now, I'm just gonna do two horizontal. So you see these two lines right here? And I'm just gonna turn on our, turn off our transparency layer so we can kind of see that. Okay, that means everything is in the exact same spot. Because we're looking at, you're taking something that is flat or turning it, so we're looking at it on a razor's edge. It's facing towards us because we're looking at it from the top. So now we need to separate these things out a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna grab my wing in the front here, and if I use my black arrow tool, which is V, I can hover over these controls and you'll see that it says X, Y, and Z. If I press Z, notice that it's coming towards or away from the camera, right? I wanna go just barely in front. I just wanna make sure that we have some depth. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this back wing, Okay, and I wanna make sure that that is in the right spot. So I'm gonna go back to Y, and I'm gonna drop this so that it's going to rotate in the right spot. Okay, and then I'm going to hit V, and I wanna just move this ever, oops, come back. Back wing and just move it ever so slightly the other direction, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is if I rotate this body, you'll notice that everything rotates with it. So you can kind of see how those are just slightly separated. We'll go back to zero there and go Y rotation. And it kind of is like this. Okay, so now what we want to do here is I want to make sure that I get some separation. So I'm going to just turn this on the Y axis, the body on the Y axis, maybe say 20 degrees ish, right? And then I'm going to hit R on this front wing and on the x-axis, I'm gonna see how I can make them flap like this. I can kind of make them flap, right? And so I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna bring this out, say 15 degrees, okay? And on this other wing, I'm going to highlight the back wing and hit R. And on that one, I'm gonna go negative 15 degrees, okay? So now, if I rotate my body again, I can see that now it's like, it's almost like three dimensions. It's almost like that because it is actually that. It is actually three dimensions. Okay, but you can see how, how we can kind of see on the right that those are separated. Great, so we're gonna call that position, position one, the up position, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I am going to turn keyframes on for my front wing on the X rotation. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on the stopwatch. So I click on the stopwatch and you'll see two things happen. It turns blue and over here it creates a keyframe, okay? And that's, that's the position that we want it in. I'm gonna hit plus so that we can kind of jump into, um, it, that'll zoom in on our timeline, okay? And at one second, I'm gonna make a copy of this keyframe. Copy and paste with Command C, Command V, Control on a PC. And then in the middle, I wanna rotate this down. So I wanna go down like that. Right about there is good, okay? And so I went down 134 degrees. You can kinda of just eyeball it, okay? And now it'll go down and up, okay? So that's great, okay? But it's kind of robotic, so let's watch it. I'm gonna hit the space bar here. Is it rendering it? Seems to have frozen up a little bit. Let's try that again. We've killed it. All right, we'll just we'll just do this. So it's a little bit robotic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag and select all three of those keyframes, right click on one of them and choose keyframe assistant 
then choose Easy Ease. What that does is it just smooths thing out, things out so they look a little bit more natural. As it approaches the keyframe, it'll slow down. As it exits, exits the keyframe, it'll speed up. So it gets faster as it leaves the keyframe and it gets slower as it, kind of like if you go slow down and then speed up, right? That's kind of what it's doing, right? So now that we've got that, that's great. So our front wing is flapping. Now, many people would take this and they would copy these keyframes over to the back wing, but I don't wanna do that because I wanna ensure that my wings are exactly the same. And so I'm gonna go on my X rotation down here. Here's the trick. I'm going to create an expression that will do the opposite rotation. It'll rotate away from that other wing exactly. And so I'm going to hit Alt, and I'm gonna click on this stopwatch that brings up my expression menu, okay? And then oftentimes people will go in here and they'll go to property and they'll look at stuff. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick with this. I'm just gonna grab this, Make sure that text is selected. Grab this pick whip, not the big parenting pick whip, but the pick whip, pick whip that's next to the expression. Try to say that five times fast. Pick whip next to the expression. I'm just gonna do it once. And then I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to pick whip the X rotation that has the keyframes, okay? And that gives me this big long equation. This comp layer wing FF transform rotation, blah, 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 right? I'm gonna surround that with I don't even care what that is because I pick whipped it, so it put in the right stuff for me. I'm going to surround that with parentheses. So you notice I just put parentheses around it, and then I'm going to multiply it by negative one. So I'm going to go multiply, which is the asterisk key, open and close parentheses, and inside of those I'm going to put negative one. And now what it will do when I click away from that is it will match that flap. It matches that flap, right? That's pretty cool. I like that. That's pretty rad. Okay, um, but I don't. I also don't want to copy and paste all of these keyframes so that it keeps flapping. I just want it to keep flapping over here. So I can do this without keyframes, um, or without adding more keyframes. I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to click on this stopwatch. Okay, and that opens the expression menu from here. And actually, we are going to open the menu. So the expression language menu is this little circle with a triangle inside of it, and we're going to go to property. We're going to go to loop out, okay? And then when I click away, when it gets to the end here, it should keep going. Why is it not? It should keep going. It has stopped. Let's try that. Oh, I did loop in. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. I picked the wrong one. I'm just going to do out here, and that should, that should work. So there we go. Now it keeps flapping. So... Oddly enough, you have to press the right button for it to work. Okay, so it's flapping, it's flapping, that's great. Now what I would like to do, okay, is I'm gonna move this body down. Notice how it's just right there at the top edge there. It's a little too close for comfort. So I'm gonna hit position, okay, and I take my Y position and just drop it down ever so slightly, okay, and then I'm gonna go down and make sure that it fits there. Okay, that's great. So now what I'm gonna do is on my body, I'm gonna close these up. On my body position, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go separate dimensions, okay? And that changes the one position into three different elements that you can manipulate independently of each other. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to alt click on Y and I'm going to go to my menu, the circle with a triangle, go to property and choose wiggle. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff in wiggle. You you can literally delete everything after amplitude for what we're doing, okay? I don't need any of that jazz. And you replace frequency with the number of times that you would like to cycle through this random number in one second. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this happen a lot. So I'm gonna go six times every second. And then amplitude is the amount that you would like that thing to happen, okay? Now this is a pretty big artboard that I'm working on. And so I'm gonna do like let's say 600 pixels, okay? And so that's going to move vertically between 600 pixels. So you notice that now it's going up and down randomly. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna grab the y X position. I'm going to click, and I'm gonna type in wiggle, open close parentheses, and I'm gonna go, let's go less frequently, so less frequency. Now let's say two times per second, comma, but more, let's go 1200 pixels. Okay, so now this is gonna create random numbers in between uh, zero and 1200 and happen two times a second. 
And so now it's going to move forward and back. So notice how it's moving forward and back. Okay, so that gives us kind of that erratic movement. That's really cool. But I'm not done. I also want him to turn in space. And so I'm gonna hit rotation here. Okay, and on my Y rotation, which will rotate him this way and that way, okay, um, I wanna say 50 to, yeah, so I'm gonna say 70 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna go Alt-click to open up my expression menu. And then I'm going to go wiggle, open close parentheses, and I'm gonna do this a little bit slower. So let's say just once a second, and uh, I'm gonna do this, what did I say, 70 degrees, because we're in a rotation now, so it's degrees and not pixels. So now he's gonna go back and forth and rotate towards us and away from us, okay? And so that is how you can take a two-dimensional object and you can make it flap, rotate, and move and pivot in 3D space. And so you get stuff like this, where he just flies across the screen and looks so cool, but you didn't have to learn 3D, which is awesome, because 3D is really hard. All you have to do is take 2D things and make them move in 3D space, and you have 2.5D. If you wanna see more of this stuff, then you can go to my website, coreykerr.com. You can check me out on Twitter and all that jazz and Instagram and all that. Um, and if you like this video, uh, hit that like button. If you want more of this stuff, hit subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified when I when I uh, post new videos and whatnot. And make sure to check out the playlist on this video because I have a lot more of taking your design and illustration skills from Adobe Illustrator and translating it into how things work in Adobe After Effects. So that you can go from I know zero, I know nothing about After Effects, to being able to make stuff move and make stuff look really cool. We will check you guys out later. I'm out.